Hi, this is Brian with ActiveMelody.com. In this week's lesson, we're going to be taking a look at dissonance, what that is, and uh, how you can work that into your playing. So if you're accompanying somebody else, another instrumentalist, your job should always be to make them sound good, or the music together sound good. And that's what this is. How do you blend in with somebody and really compliment them? Uh, and this is all inspired by one of my guitar heroes, Dave Rawlings. And I've, you know, I've talked about him before. We'll talk about him more in this lesson, but... Uh, but that's where this comes from, this style of kind of bluegrass mixed with uh, sort of spacey, I don't know what you call it, but we're going to break this down over the course of two videos. So in this video, we'll take a look at the first half. If you'd like to watch the second half and download the tablature and the MP3 jam track, which I have in multiple tempos, you can get those things by going to activemelody.com, go to the weekly lessons page, and do a search for EP381. All right, so in this week's lesson, we're going to be talking about dissonance, what that is, and how you can work some of that into your playing. Uh, and there's also a little bit of a bluegrass element thrown in. It's kind of a strange combination, this sort of spacey, dissonant thing mixed with bluegrass, but I think it works really well. And this is really designed to help those of you that are trying to accompany another guitar player, or what well, doesn't have to be another guitar, another instrument. But especially when you have a stripped-down version, that's what we have this week. We only have two guitars. And if you look, go back and listen to that, it sounds very big. It sounds like there's a full band. But in actual fact, there's just two tracks. One guitar is just strumming the chords, which we're going to go through. And then the other guitar is playing all of this really kind of cool, dissonant stuff that happens on top of that. And that's what we're going to be taking a look at. Now, this is all inspired by Dave Rawlings. He's one of my all-time favorite guitar players. Definitely in the top five of uh, most influential, for me anyway. Uh, and I remember seeing him when he first came into town uh, in the sort of mid-90s, or that's when I saw him, late mid to late 90s, but uh, he was with Gillian Welch. They're still together. They're, they're an act that are just incredible. There's just, just the two of them. They can bring the house down. And Dave, his stuff on guitar is some of the most creative that I've ever heard. I, I still don't know of anyone that plays like him. He's in a category of his own. It's hard to even sort of label him. Is he bluegrass? Is he gospel? Is he, you know blues. He's kind of a little bit of all of that. And so anyway, I've got a playlist that I'll add to this page down in the description with a handful of uh, Dave Rawlings, Gillian Welch songs um, that will be a Spotify playlist, but you can um, you can hear what he does with just two guitars. It'll be just Gillian and Dave. It's incredible. So I wanted to plug that. All right, so uh, let's uh, break this down. Now we'll start by talking through the chords. These are very simple chords. We started with an A minor. Then it goes to a C. Actually, I'm playing that too fast. It goes A minor. Holds out on there. Then to a C. And then we go to a G. And then to a D. That's it. I mean, it, it doesn't get any easier than that. A minor, C, G, and D. And those are straight chords. There's not like sevens or nines. It's just the straight chord. There is another part, which we'll go through in the part two, where it goes from a G, C, D. So those those are in there, sort of the part B. But in this video, we're going to take a look at uh, just that first part. Okay, so that first A minor, the first thing that I played when it comes in was this. And I got this straight out of the Dave Rawlings handbook, so I can't take credit for this. Uh, this is very clever. And so what's going on here is I'm playing the fourth fret, uh, third string, and then I'm also playing the second string. So that's a B note, and then there's an open B. You're kind of sliding into it. Now a B played over an A minor. It's a strange sound. That's not what you would typically play. You'd probably play the root note or you know something in maybe the minor pentatonic scale or something, but to play that B, that would be, if you were looking at the A natural minor scale, that would be like your second interval in that. So you're playing. So we start with that. So it goes. And then I slide down, down to the second fret, and then the open third string. And then the song goes to a C. And by the way, we'll play along with a jam track here in a minute to put all this in context. But And then there's a, a C chord, and I played over the C. Now that is just the C major scale. That's not anything clever. 
And that sounds pretty good, especially starting with this note, which is your D note. You know, when you hear that in context with the C chord, it sounds pretty cool. So we, we play third fret, second string, first fret, second string, hit that a few times, and then watch this. So open second, second fret, third string, open third string. And again, these notes are all in the C major scale. So that's where they come from. All right, so let me back up. I'll play the slow version of the jam drag so that you can hear these notes played in context. One, two, three, four. All right, so now the song goes to the G chord, and I played this lick, which is something that you can use going forward now when you play over G. And I got that one from, from Dave Rawlings. I love that lick. Simple, but it's very powerful. It's really like a G sus, it's G sus four. So I'm starting with the third fret, fifth string, open third string, open fourth string. Now these two notes, are in the G chord, right? Right? So you have, that makes sense as to why they would work. And then we walk down to the second fret. So that's the lick. So the next time you're playing, you're jamming with somebody and there's a G chord. Start working that in. Look at that, just right there, just two notes that I'm fretting there. Third fret and second fret. It creates a real open, spacey sound, and it works really nice for that. So then we come to this part that goes. Let me show you how to play that, and then we'll talk through it. Um, so it's easy to play. It's just the second fret, third fret on the fifth string, open fourth string, second fret fourth string, and then we're going to come up and do a slide from the fourth to the fifth fret on the fourth string. And then match that note, it's also another G note there, by playing the open G string. So all together, it sounds like that. And you'll get the timing as we play along with the jam track. And then I walked it down, while that note rings out, there's your dissonance. So it's down to the fourth fret, second fret, this is on the fourth string, and then you hit the open fourth string twice. So all together, that entire lick, sounds like that. Now what's going on there is that's where the song is on the G, and then in the, the chord switches to a D chord. And you'll, I'll play the jam track here in a minute and you'll hear that switch. And so a lot of what dissonance is, is letting a note, taking advantage of open strings, and letting a note ring out while you create a, this tension like this. So what you do is you take the note and then you go down one fret behind that note. And obviously this, you have to have an open string to do it the way that I'm doing it here. Um, otherwise you could go back and forth, but that's not the same as having that sound, that clash. And so if I walked up to you and just play that, you'd think my guitar is out of tune. But that's what it is. So you can take any of these open strings, you find the note, uh, match that note on a string, another string, and then just go down a fret. So there it would be on the an E. And you'd hear that in bluegrass, you hear it in ragtime, you hear it in blues. So if I'm in playing a blues. You know, you hear that kind of thing. And so that to me is what, you know, it creates, it's just tension and that's all music is anyway in the end. It's just a series of tensions and release. All right, so that's one cycle through. Now the song goes back to the A minor chord. We're gonna play the same chords in the same order. And I went back to this, the way I started. That, sliding up to that fourth fret, third string while I'm playing the open second string. I'm playing two B notes, but it's sliding into it creates that uneasiness a little bit. And then the song goes to the C, and I went 
played this. Now what I was picturing as I did this is I was just picturing the C major pentatonic scale. And I was thinking of pattern five and then pattern one. So that's what I could see as we were playing the C. So the C chord happens there and I went. So that's a chromatic walk. So I'm going from the third fret up to the fifth fret on the second string. So I play three, four, five. When I say chromatic, it just means we're playing every note along the way. That's really all chromatic is. Instead of uh, just you know skipping a string, you're playing all of them in a row. Uh, so we come up here to the fifth fret, second string, third fret, first string, and I played that two, one, two, one. So it goes like this, and then watch this. That's where I slide into pattern one, minor, or sorry, major pentatonic scale for C. So that would be the 8th fret, 2nd string, 5th fret, 1st string. So now we, from the beginning of that leg. And then, I'm going to come up here, because now we're getting ready to go to the G chord. So I'm holding that 8th fret, 2nd string, and then my middle finger goes to the 7th fret, 1st string. And then my pinky goes down on the 8th fret 1st string. And then we go down to the 7th fret 1st string. So you have 1, 2, 1, 2, 8, 7. Now what's going on there? Well, chord-wise, um, I'm thinking about, that's where the song goes to the G chord. I knew we were playing a G chord. I was in this position from playing into that major pentatonic scale pattern 1. And I was thinking about where's my nearest G chord. This is always the logic that goes through my head as I'm, as I'm, actually as anybody plays the chord changes, you're just always thinking about where's the, your nearest neighbor to the chord. So I know I'm in this position. Well, I've got a G chord right here. It looks, it's the same as the D chord shape if I were to play it right here. So I, I, I knew I had my ring finger already in position. So that's what that is. That would be like a, G sus4, kind of like that, that first lick that we played, right? Um, okay, so um, backing up then we have... So then I came down here into pattern 2 of the major pentatonic scale for C. I played uh, those two notes there, so that'd be the 9th fret 3rd string, 8th fret 2nd string, back to the 9th fret 3rd string. So you want, and then watch this. Very cool shift here. Uh, this is something else I, I ripped off from Dave. Sorry Dave. But, so what I'm doing there is 7, 6, 5 on the 3rd string, ring finger goes down on the 7th fret 2nd string. Now why this? Where are we at in the song? I know it's hard to do without the jam track playing as I'm talking about this. This is where the song goes from the G chord to the D chord. And listen, with that D chord, what you're really doing is you're walking down 7, 6, 5, and when you go to that 5th fret 3rd string, you're playing like a, that's the 7, 7 interval. So that'd be like the flat 7, that'd be a, like a dominant 7 chord. And then you work in that note, which is another note in the D7 chord. So that'd be the uh, second string on the seventh fret. Now, if you like the sound of this lick, here's how you can get to it and play it anytime. So we're playing over the D chord, right? Well, I'm picturing the D chord right here using the A shape. Look at where my two fingers are, fifth fret and seventh fret. And look at where we played that lick. We walked it down seven, down to the five. And then we came back to that 7th fret 2nd string. So now if you want to work that, just that one little lick into anything going forward. If somebody was playing a C chord and you like that sound, you could go... Right? A really pretty way of kind of... And you could work go somewhere else after that, but, but that's the lick. So after that 7th fret 2nd string, we're going to play 5th fret 2nd string, 3rd fret 2nd string. And what's going on chord-wise is the song has switched, is we've, we're still playing over that D chord, but the song is gonna go to a G chord. And that's where it goes into that second part. But to get to that, I went. And you can hear what's going on there. 
As I'm playing, that's just the G chord. Played right here, it's part of the bar chord, all right? Just those three notes. Three strings, rather. So, um, from here, from the D, we're going five, three, and then here's another little dissonant part where I've got my um, third fret, second string, and then my fifth fret, third string. I'm gonna hit that three times, and then I'm gonna come down with my middle finger. I keep my index finger on the third fret, second string. Middle finger goes down to the fourth fret, third string. And then my ring finger comes up here and goes down on the fifth fret, fourth string. And I play strings four and three. So all, all, this, all together that goes. And hear how nicely that transitions into the G. What am I doing there? That's just a G sus four chord. So we've actually touched on that G sus four three times in this. I didn't realize that until just now. And so that's all I'm doing. I'm just playing two notes out of it. But it's just a really pretty sound, uh, especially as the chord kind of goes into the G to hear that lead into it. It kind of pulls you in. All right, so let me back up. We'll play everything that we've learned so far with a slow jam track. Uh, and then if you're a premium member, you can join me in part two where we'll learn the second half. It has more of the bluegrass kind of licks. Uh, they're easy to play, though. They're not difficult. And obviously, with a premium membership, you also have access to the tablature and the MP3 jam tracks that you can practice with. If you haven't joined us yet, I would encourage you to at least take a look at it. It's very affordable. New lessons every Friday. Uh, and I have 10 years' worth of archives. All right, let's take a look. One, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. 